Hello there, I'm Man in Yellow and welcome back to Phobies. I just thought I'd do a video on the unit cap in Phobie matches and why it's so important to keep track of. By unit cap I'm talking about the maximum amount of Phobies you can have in each map. And I mean that each player can have. So each, on small maps each player can have 5 Phobies at maximum and on big maps it's 7. This is important because if you summon too many small things your opponent may just choose to leave them alive and then either build up like a very big board or just straight up hard rush you with bigger units without killing your stuff. Sometimes you can negate that by like sacrificing your units by placing them on lava or something. But it's like that, that kind of takes a certain mind to do. And it's also a bit slow because the lava usually takes two turns to ki kill even the small units unless they have been damaged. And you obviously, if you're doing this to your opponent, you're not gonna you're not gonna damage their units if it's possible for you to not do it. So it's essentially just that you may have to little pressure, and this is a mistake that a lot of players make, both newer and experienced ones. I make it myself a lot. For example, I have a bad habit of summoning small units when to max myself out on on unit space or unit cap, whatever you wanna call it. So that I can't summon anything big after. But in this case it wasn't actually me that made the mistake for once. And this is often a thing that's kind of hard to see the effect of. Because it's like such a minor thing. Like they summon a one key and then you lock them on keys maybe. And try to go in or something. Or you just don't let them uh, don't let them summon anything for the rest of the game by never killing anything. But it usually ends up very, very late game that it happens, or if there's like a standoff. In this case, it happened very early. And in this case, you can see it very, very clearly how it happens. So we are against Thelios here, who is one of the higher stress level players in the game. And I'm just going with a very stand standard opener here. Double one key and a unicorn. This is pretty much what you see from everyone who has unicorn on this map. At least most of the time. Sometimes people do like a lot of one keys. So he does a somewhat similar thing here. With a, with a lot more one keys though. And now at this point there's not really any problem. Because it's so early on that you can summon a lot of small units and it won't hurt you because like you can still summon big things so we just do a very standard movement here place them back here so they can defend points and stuff like that and we bring an oculus out saving some keys so we can go for like medic or attractor whatever we want to and this is where I, I believe this is the turn where he makes the mistake of summoning way too many units yeah you can see here so now he has maxed out on units 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So he can't summon any more on next turn unless some of his stuff dies. And he's not even placing them in an aggressive position. So none of his stuff is ever going to die. He's always going to be skipping his next turn, essentially, with the keys. But I would be fine. Skipping one turn can be okay. Although I would still say that's a small mistake. But here's the thing, because... I'm going to choose not to kill any of these for a very, very long time. And instead I'm going to focus on taking panic points. Now I'm only taking one this turn because I'm still staying defensive. Just to see what he does. But he actually still plays fairly de defensive even though he has maxed out on these smaller units and can't summon anything large right now. He even moves this... this uh, this all the way back here, it could easily have gone out and then blocked for the unicorn or something. So here I damage this. This is actually a mistake. I probably shouldn't have like dealt damage or anything to his phobies at all. Because now it only has 550 health, so it's gonna die to this in 3 ticks. But I probably shouldn't have done that, but he could probably have sacrificed something else. I also shouldn't be placing traps down, although I am making sure to place them in places where he's probably unlikely to to go right now. Like, he's not gonna walk here with anything at the moment. And this is especially amplified because there's so many panic points on this map. So if you have too many small units, 
and your opponent just ignores stuff and starts taking panic points and it becomes really hard. And here he made the mistake of running away for some reason. He should have just thrown all of these one keys at me really. Tried to get some key trades or something and then summon a lot of big units on one of the following turns. Like yeah, he would lose a bit of bit of value from losing a couple of those one keys, but like you can see now, I'm taking every panic point on the board. They should probably have gone here, so he can't take that. Actually, he can't anyway, can he? Yeah, he can with this. Should probably have placed the unicorn here instead, but whatever. It's not really gonna matter. At the end, he actually almost pulls it back because he's very over leveled, but it, it's still it's still a thing you shouldn't do. So now he's finally going a bit more aggressive because he's realizing that he needs to do something at this point because he has how many keys? 18 keys saved up. Now he has 23 keys saved up. And that's a lot of keys to be setting on. But here I'm healing the Noxious. Actually, I don't know how damage that was. Probably didn't need to heal it there. But I think it's because I wanted to go aggressive with it or something like that. To be able to tank stuff. And don't know if it was actually in danger. Here we move the cowbell away because we don't want it to just die and then this gets capped by tickles. That wouldn't really make sense. And then we are summoning some flying units to try and attack his heart or at least have some extra mobility here. Very basic stuff. So again, I haven't killed anything of his things yet. Here he actually hits a trap which is very very good for him because this is gonna die. He also places this on lava. He should probably have done this earlier, but it's still the correct thing to do to kind of get his unit slots opened up. He kills the unicorn, which we don't care about at all. Who cares? This dying was actually really bad for us though. When you start going for this strategy, you should probably stop placing traps down. Because now he has unlocked a, a unit slot, which means he's gonna be able to summon something and it's probably gonna be a very huge because he has 28 keys saved up so he's gonna be summoning 8 or 9 keys essentially and I'm just taking back panic points while trying to be aggressive by placing all of these units in a range of his heart and then we're also summoning another unit to attack his heart this one was probably badly placed or just chosen in general. We should have probably gone with something else. I could have also gone aggressive because you can actually just kill it here. Although it does force him to not take panic points to kill that, so maybe it's worth it. I don't know. That was probably a better option there. So he's summoning a 9 key here to deal with my noxious that's close to his heart. Now at this point, I'm going to be moving some of this stuff back, I believe. And that is probably a mistake to do. <laughs> but, whatever. Yeah, I'm moving this back. The Pterodactyl I'm moving back. It would probably have been smarter for me to just place both of these units very close to here. And then kill this through some other means. Take control of this with something else. Instead I'm just throwing out these goggles here. Because it can be very annoying. It can hold a panic point basically indefinitely. And it can also get close to their heart very easily since it's a flyer. It's hard to block off. And I also kill a lot of his units here. Because as you can see he has no health left. The other reason for keeping the ginseng out would also be because it can do an AoE, so if we can deal damage to the heart even if he places units all around it. But it turns out we won't need that here, actually. He actually does a very good job at blocking around here with units and putting up a scary enough front that it's hard to go to him. 
unfortunately I just have enough like damage and leftover phobies to be able to take this stuff. This should have been dead, which would have helped him a lot. But as you can see, I'm just gonna take this last last point and I'm up in points then, so he's gonna die to the damage here. But even then, I would have placed this very close. May not have worked because it could have died, but this is enough damage. So the game ends without him spending 10 keys up here. As you can see, he still had 10 keys left over, and I killed a total of 4 keys throughout that entire match. And this is why it's important, essentially, to make sure that you don't unit cap. Now, this is a very extreme example. Normally, you would have a bunch of units out there, and then maybe you accidentally like summon a 1 key or 2 1 keys, and then your opponent does this. Um, in which case, it's harder to just hard rush them from... <laughs> you're not going to be hard rushing them from the start, like from the get-go, but... You can still still apply it in other matches to actually lock them on the amount of keys. I've seen it a bunch of times with stuff like Boomer where opponents place it at the middle point and people just don't kill it and then just leave it there so that they are capped on units and can't, can't bring out a powerful unit instead of the Boomer. Anyway, I just thought I'd do a short, short video on that because well, it's important to know, but it was also a kind of funny match in my opinion.